Hello and welcome back everyone to another Fan Factory Friday and have I got a treat for you today. Now this is probably one of my favourite factories that I have come across so far. So if you like the map, why not drop a thumbs up and if you enjoy my content, why not join me over on Twitch? Anyway, let's jump into it. This save was sent in by Rolliber and I must admit that I'm so glad that he sent it over to me. I just really do hope that I can do it justice in the following seven minutes. We may end up running over slightly. What stands out straight away with this save is his dedication to trains and also his attention to supporting his factories and also the details he puts into the factories. He takes an approach where each factory provides what he needs rather than going down the route of mass production. And with a total of 450 hours in game, he's put in a countless amount of work to make each factory fit in with the theme of his world, whilst each unique in its own right. Whether it's the nuclear power plant, the steel factory, home base, or the many others scattered around the world. And it doesn't matter if they're big or small, they've all got a huge amount of detail. In fact, what truly stands out and amazes me is how many standalone factories there are and how much work he's put into them making these giant buildings somehow also fit with the surrounding terrain. And he's not afraid of using the terrain either. Rather than hiding it or demolishing it all, he removes what's necessary and then works around the rest. I mean, look at this, it's stunning. Each factory is connected to a hypertube network and he also connects the factories with great use from conveyor buses and pipes and he also uses trains as well, but we will get to that in a separate section in a little bit. Now, what I especially love about these buses is not so much how neat they are, I mean, that is a given, but how he also uses them below his factories. 90% of his factories are fed by underfloor conveyors, and it really does give an amazing aesthetic to his factory. But then again, I am biased, I always love this approach. I must admit that Inside the factories, alongside the underfed conveyors, he often makes full use of the foundation frames, giving a great industrial look. I mean, this is quite literally mind-blowing to me. And in this particular factory, he also makes great use of the glass, both with the foundations, but also with the walls as well. And speaking of walls, he makes use of the walls throughout his factory. Rather than just using one large floor, he has inner walls compartmentaling areas as well. I mean, the pure amount of care that's gone into the aesthetics quite literally puts half of my builds to shame, which actually brings me to a point that I've wanted to address um, because we've had some common comments in these Fan Factory videos. Uh, quite often I get the message from people who feel that their builds are now inadequate after seeing something like this. And I don't blame them for saying that, but that's not what this series is about. It's about sharing ideas. And after seeing this, I mean, I'm half tempted to stop making videos altogether. Nothing I can do will be as good as this. But that would be the wrong approach. In fact, I'm inspired to try out new ideas and see if I can integrate some of these ideas better in my factories. So don't feel you're inadequate. Uh, we all start somewhere and it's a process of development and learning. I guess this is just like a necessary growing pain. Moving back to the factory, each room in here gives me a pleasant surprise and I love his balance with the space, styles and decoration. Nothing is overused and just works together. This feels to me what I envision a real factory to look like. In his last project, he was working on unlocking all the space elevator tiers and building the space elevator parts in a factory that integrates the space elevator. And I think he's done a great job, although it's kind of reminding me of Thunderbird 3 and I don't know why, maybe it's just the red and the kind of shuttle-like approach. 
Then scattered around the outside are some smaller factories as well and all of these factories are producing something based on the nodes that they're on top of. Take for example the concrete plant, the copper sheet factory or this screw and pipe workshop. It's all these little variations that really bring the diversity to his landscape. And it's not just the odd massive factory or lots of smaller ones. There's so much variation that it's just incomparable to 90% of the factories that I've seen or built myself. Next, let's head back to the home base whilst talking about his rails. Each large factory is connected via the rail network and a lot of work has been put into developing this system and he's developed it so his trains run along the right hand side and return on the left. This planning will pay off dividends later on I'm sure. I mean this network will work perfectly when signals are implemented, providing of course that Coffee Stain doesn't break the game on the update. Heading along the tracks, I have to admit, I love how he set them up, running on top of the foundation frames and very nicely supported regularly. I think this is probably the most complicated working train system I've seen in games so far and it really is a joy to watch. Even at 5am I'm spending more time watching the trains than I should. Though the trains mostly connect at other main factories, they're also used at outposts throughout the map collecting extra resources for his factory's needs and I love this supported monorail approach which he uses throughout the map. Upon returning to the main base he has a huge factory that is located among many different levels. Again it's this variation that does make his factory truly stand out. To power this factory he's running a sizeable coal and fuel power plant here as well as the gorgeous nuclear power plant we saw earlier over at the Fools accompanying 10 nuclear power plants. Obviously the uranium being rather dangerous he's nicely planned everything to be spread out with a lovely waterfall backdrop. Nothing like radiating the world's water sources, no wonder there's a toxic swamp below. Returning to his main base and admiring his railway junctions again just a little too much, we'll take a look at the factory. Now on the lower levels the trucks have the run of the mill, which is nice to see as it shows he's using all the transportation methods that are available for him for his factory. And above that level he also has a pretty large conveyor bus system spreading the resources throughout the factory. Now factories are connected via hyper tubes, hallways and also walkways and again the factory really does look aesthetically pleasing and I love how he displays all his random collectibles on a conveyor that goes around his base. The two silver hogs of course are a lovely addition too and his storage facility is spacious from below but from above it just looks draw dropping and obviously uses the overflow method for sinking any excess items. And finishing off he also has a mini doggo farm with a golden doggo statue just outside his hub with a really nice collection of personal storage. In all honesty there's just there's so much more I'd like to cover in this video but having written this script I think we're already way over the video length so I really am going to have to finish it here but this was truly a fantastic build that I feel so privileged to have checked out and I can only hope that I am able to take on some of his techniques to further my own build. So if you guys did love his build then please do hit the thumbs up and let him know and also let us know what you most liked about this factory in the comments section below. Also why not join us over on Twitch or subscribe to my content on here if you enjoy my weekly satisfactory content. Anyway guys thank you so much for watching and until next time as always.
Ciao for now.